Hello, this is Felicity. I'm speaking to you from my library. And although I've promised that I was going to do a show and tell from my Loeb library collection, I'm not going to do that this afternoon. Instead, I thought I would do something different yet again. And I am going to show you some of my treasures from my library. Some of them are really obvious. You're going to say, yes, of course, that's a fantastic, amazing book. Ooh, I wish I had that. And others, you may say, why ever does she think that's a treasure? Hopefully, I'll be able to answer a few of those questions, asked or unasked. Anyway, the first book that I've chosen from my treasures of treasures, I actually, I love every book in my library. Who am I kidding? Even the tatty old paperbacks. But the first one I have is one that I like a lot. This has a variety of things to to amuse me in it. One, the very first, of course, is that it's stories selected stories of Edgar Allan Poe, but illustrated by Harry Clark, the absolutely fantastic, pretty fantastical artist from Cork, where I spent some years of my of my life, three to be exact. And um, he's a he's a uh, he's a sort of a uh, fantasy artist, did stained glass, did uh, illustrations, sort of not quite Aubrey Beardsley, but definitely of that period, and I really, really love him. <laughs> anyway, this book was published by Tudor in 1939, and it's illustrated. I'll show you one. Uh, it is, uh, it is the illust one of the illustrations for The Pit and the Pendulum. We all know that story. <laughs> Okay, you, all of you folks there who love horror stories, oh, that is the one, that is the classic. But anyway, here is the third of three. He did, he went to town on this one. Here's the third of three illustrations for The Pit and the Pendulum. Oh my goodness, there he goes. I had nightmares about this one when I was a kid. <laughs> and there's quite a few in this book. They're all, they're all fabulous and fantastic. And they're mostly like these sorts of things. After all, this is that he's illustrating, but um, he certainly has other things of his that I've seen that were that were not quite so that were not so quite so horror filled uh, or, or unease filled. His uh, stained glass windows, the uh, artwork that he did at the um, at the uh, the the, the uh, chapel for University College Cork are exquisite, really really beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> so this is treasure number one. And Girl and Poe, as illustrated by Harry Clark, published 1939. I found this one at most books. I was just passing through there, having purchased a number of other books, quite a few, spent my allotted amount. And um, as I was going out, I saw this one sitting on the counter, and I said, oh, is that one for sale yet? And the guy behind the counter said, well, do you want it? And I said, I do. How much is it? And he said, what do you want to pay? <laughs> It's not quite that bad, but I pretty much he pretty much knew he had me hooked by the time uh, uh, we had that little tiny um, bit of dialogue. So uh, yeah, I bought the book. I didn't really even ask. Very, I didn't say, oh, let's negotiate, let's do anything. I just said, I want that book. Um, and on the same subject of, I saw the book and I said, I want that book and didn't much ask, was this one here, which is another one of my great big huge ones. Um, and you'll see. Oh my goodness, these are all really heavy. Uh, let's see in a minute why some of you um, fellow geekier book lovers may actually recognize the one. This is Codex Seraphinianus, uh, the Abbeville edition, uh, first Abbeville edition, which is the mere first American one, and uh, it's a uh, uh, it's one of those books that for a long while I had read about, seen pictures of, absolutely intrigued by, never saw a copy anywhere. The Italian first edition is unobtainable, at least even then it was unobtainable on my, on my salary, and I was doing pretty well. I was engaged as a geek, as a programmer, and um, I, 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 I went into my friendly local bookstore, which at that time was uh, the other change of Hobbit on Berkeley, and I said, Hey Dave, I don't suppose you have a copy of the Codex Seraphinianus. Thinking he was going to say like, Felicity, you've got to be kidding. He said, wait right there. So he pops down to Moriah. Any of you who remember uh, Other Change of Hobbit from the 
good old days remember that he had this amazing crazy scary downstairs which was not open to the public where he kept all the other stuff so he comes back up the stairs lugging this book and i said oh you do have a copy and he said mm -hmm. so he would be drool over for a couple of minutes and then uh, he said so do you want it and i said yes and I didn't say how much. He said, well, I was asking 900 but I'll sell it to you for instead. And I said, fine. And I whipped out the checkbook and said, sign me up right now. Anyway, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. There's nothing that's not fun to look at in this, but this is one of those really, really wild ones. If you've not heard the Codex Serafinianus, it's, it's the one which looks like a real book, but it is, um, and it is a real book, but it looks like it's written in real words, except that... Um, they don't even make any sense. Let's see if I can find, oh, they are all favorites. Just pick one, Felicity. <laughs> here we go. So uh, here we go. This is, a, this is a pretty good example, although there's others that are certainly more famous. But this one doesn't make the press much because it is, um, it is, it is sort of one right in the middle there. Let me see if I can get this straight this time. I've not quite mastered evening up here, the video thing, but let's see if I can get it close. There we go. Anyway, this is a middle page from the Codex Serafinianus, um, with a sample of the handwriting and a sample of the kinds of words and definitely a sample of the kind of pictures. And it's wild. It's crazy. It's um, it's a, sort of like a, a illustrated encyclopedia of an imaginary of a planet that doesn't exist, of a place that doesn't exist, that has slightly different physics from what you'd expect. It starts off, it's actually, it's got this wonderful um, intro where where he goes through, as if it were an encyclopedia, going from the beginning, from the protozoic stage to now, showing um, showing all the stages of growth. And so he has all these different kinds of animals that might exist in this uh, imaginary place with imaginary lettering, with imaginary page numbering system. I love this book. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I had a job then that actually could, I could afford to buy a few things. This one, so this one was, this one is printed on beautiful rag paper. It's just a joy to touch. Um, it was uh, printed uh, by the Ricci Company. Uh, it was, this is the first American edition in uh, 1983. And um, it is definitely one of the prizes, albeit one of the stranger prizes and treasures in my library. All right, so that's uh, two on the more fantastical side. <laughs> somewhat another side because in fact there's a lot of different for me there's a lot of different categories of things that I call treasures in my library and some of them are just treasures because um, I've loved them for a long time or because they were meaningful for me in a in in some kind of literary sense or because they opened my eyes to something that I'd never been before this is still a little on the fantastical side but my father had an, a complete collection of the novels of Charles Williams um, and I'd read them all when I was when I was um, sort of in the high school pre high school uh, stage of my life, and it was something I'd never met before. My father was very much not into science fiction, so that that sort of literature never ever entered the house. But Charles Williams, it's, it's he, he my father doesn't know it, but that's actually pretty damn close to darn close. Sorry, <laughs> gotta watch out uh, for the the censors here. Uh, pretty close to um, science fiction, fantasy fiction, and it is. Virgin of the Macabre, of course, it's um, it's mystical, so it fit in with his sort of views of uh, religion, such as they were. I mean, he had some, he started lots, but um, he loved Charles Williams, and so did I, and so do I still. Anyway, this is a really, this was a really nice addition. It's definitely seen the slings and arrows of misfortune because the entire set of the old, um, earlier ones went to Beirut with him and a lot of the books that he ended up taking uh, got severely bug eaten while they were there. Some of them unfortunately had rebound so they are not very nice and interesting anymore but some of them he just let them be bug eaten. This one is in pretty good shape. Um, and his J.P. Brown, that was his. And this is um, Descent into Hell. This was a Pellegrinian Kudehi um, publisher, and everything I've seen of them, I actually I love. I think they uh, they must have been a, a really interesting publishing company because they do a lot of really really nice things. And the earliest ones of the um, of the Charles Williams novels that my dad had 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 that I now have. I I 
we, we, we squabbled over the books when we were uh, <laughs> splitting up the estate. And I, 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 I said, if you're getting that one, I'm getting the Charles Williams. And nobody quibbled. So there you go. They're mine. Descent into Hell, one of the treasures in my library. All right, so the other, another one in that general line is, I've, I've actually posted this on Instagram. Uh, this is a, a novel by, this is the first novel of Jane Austen's that I ever read uh, because, because I picked up this book uh, from uh, Mesmer Clark who was the old lady who lived around the street from my parents and she was the one who was uh, um, leaving her house and she had a huge library because she used to do book reviews for pay presumably and she invited all the children in the neighborhood to come by and pick a couple of books out and uh, <laughs> I didn't pick any of the ones that were books that she had uh, had had uh, reviewed except possibly the Plutarch's uh, Plutarch's Lib uh, Lives Modern Library but this one I saw and I said this is my choice. This is Pride and Prejudice. I have actually had this one rebound because it was starting to get pretty tattered even then. She looked at me, she said, I don't know how that one got into the set. That was not supposed to be given away. I've, I've had that one since I was very young. And I said, oh, okay. And she said, that's all right, you can have it now. Oh. So I have treasured this one forever. I've read it. I can't even tell how many times I've read this one. This is definitely one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites of hers, although Persuasion is a real close second. Um, still, this one has is not only by Jane Austen, but it's also probably the very first book that I personally acquired for myself. I didn't pay for it, uh, but uh, this is the first inkling that anybody in my life ever would have that I was going to be a book fiend and a book hound and here's my Pride and Prejudice and it's delightful. It's probably not a very expensive edition. It was just a, a really sweet one. This one was published by the John Winston Company in Philadelphia, I think. Uh, and there it is. And it has some pictures. Oh yeah, I remember looking and thinking, yes, that's. I'm sure that's what she looks like, which has of course spoiled all the movies and series and everything for me ever since except for one. Uh, because of course after I read the book, that's how it was in my head. So Pride and Prejudice, uh, very sweet little edition, and it was worth every penny that I spent on having it rebound because I love this book, and I'm never parting with it, and I don't care how little it's worth. I mean, there you go, Pride and Prejudice. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. What a great start. Anyway, my Pride and Prejudice. So back to the fantastic, I'm going to move this around a little bit because there's so many different categories. Um, the other category I think I can, I can safely say has several treasures in it is books that have been given to me as a gift that I've asked for. And I usually don't ask for books until I'm really, really sure that it's something I want very much and that somebody is doing me the favor of saving me from actually spending my money on it because <laughs> if they don't get it for me, I'm going to go out and get it for myself. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, what I'd really like is to have an original micrographia, but what I have is a really, really nice um, uh, facsimile. This one is... Uh, this one is the. This one is a, it's like a picture of it. It's got a picture of a griffin on the front. So of course that's what it is. It is the. Um, let's do this side here. Uh, this is a, the Griffin Library. I think this is a. This is a, um, fac a company that does facsimiles of important science works. And this one is. Uh, <laughs> let's go over the thing. And I've got some pretty end papers. Of course we all know this one. Robert Hooke, Micrographia, first important science work in English. And it has the picture of the flea in it. <laughs> um, this one um, is this one is. Oops, here we go. Here is the um, here is the title page that says that says honestly yes this is who I am. No, I'm not the real thing. But hey, you know the real thing is because you've probably seen it, and I have. I've had one in my hands, and yes, I have indeed longed and um, yes, impossibly longed for the real McCoy because there's no way I'm ever going to be able to afford the real thing unless I win the lottery. Or rob a bank, and uh, if I rob a bank, I'm going to be in jail. So, <laughs> no way. Anyway, so this is the uh, very nice. Um, this is the very nice uh, facsimile of it, and you know, 
if you haven't seen the picture of the flea, maybe I'm going to show it to you anyway because it's so cool. Let's see if I can find it now. Having <laughs> so I'm going to find the flea. Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> no, that wasn't it, but <laughs> that was the fly. <laughs> Where'd the flea go? It's a big one. It's a, one of the fold out ones. Let's see if I can find it. Did I, I didn't bookmark it. No, I didn't do that. Here you go. Yeah, is this the one? Yes. Observation 53 of a flea. <laughs> I don't think I can get far enough back, but that's it! <laughs> <laughs> and I actually saw this in an original first edition copy of the uh, Micrographia, and I was permitted to not only hold the book, but very carefully and daintily unfold the illustration of the flea, and I thought I was going to have a heart attack. That was one of the most exciting things that happened to me all year, all my life. Well, maybe not all my life. <laughs> other good things to have happened, but that was pretty awesome. I won't forget that one in a hurry. Anyway, so after that, I decided, since I knew I was never going to be able to afford the real thing, I asked if I could be given a present of it, and it appeared one year for my birthday. Uh, I'm pretty stoked to have this in my library. Anyway, this is a very nice facsimile of the Micrographia by Robert Hooke. Okay, so there's that, and then, uh, let me see. So, Here's another, here's another, I'm going to, this is going to go this direction here. So here's another book that was gifted to me very, very early on in my life. And I did not actually expect that this was coming. Um, I think my parents knew me pretty well, certainly at that stage, quite young when I received this. But they gave me, they may have even had paper covers when they came. They gave me for mm, Christmas one year, they gave me, hmm, the complete Sherlock Holmes and as you can see from the books they are a little bit the worst for wear. I love these books. I have subsequently gotten a couple of slightly better condition volumes but I never read them because whenever I feel like rereading Sherlock Holmes the pages are all known to me and they're the right shape and all the words are in the right places on the page and so when I read the same story in another edition I say Something's wrong with this. The words aren't in the right place on the page. And I put it back and it's all carefully, you know, put back in its little self section on the shelf. And I get out my old tattered ones again and I read them again. Um, the pages are getting pretty sad. They're getting pretty dog-eared. They're getting pretty uh, furry around the edges, but it doesn't matter. They're mine. Anyway, this was my present for my parents. Probably one of their earlier their earlier gifts to me that precede, certainly precede the um, acquisition, my acquisition of the uh, uh, Pride and Prejudice, but um, this one I've had for a really long time. I remember uh, gobbling them up, and the first time I gobbled them up, I, I just finished reading the, uh, the, the, the Tale of the Speckled Band, and um, uh, late at, late in the afternoon or evening and, and we had to go to bed right after that so lights off lights off at eight o'clock okay kids I don't care you've had you've had your fun today it's time for me to have fun you're going to bed and you're staying there I don't care so I'm lying there in the bed absolutely rigid and my bed happened to be right across from a, a, <laughs> a heater vent so I'm lying there in my bed and I'm sort of looking I'm looking at that heater vent right across from me and I'm thinking there are no snakes there there are no snakes on the other side they're not coming through the vent. They're not slithering under my bed and pff, I was young, eating their way through the bed springs. They're not doing that. I know they're not. Ah! Okay, maybe they are. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. That's the only one of the, um, of the ones that I had said I was going to finish for the month of um, uh, March of the Mammoths. I actually did finish it because it wasn't really hard because I just gobbled them all up again. Sherlock Holmes. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to move to something slightly different. Okay, here's one that I also obtained from the other Change of Hobbit. Man, I love that store. They got some of my money, and I had a whole lot of fun. The Change of Hobbit, when it was on Shattuck Avenue, um, just around the BART station, was was it was right there on my path back to where we were living. Um, and at that time, I had a job at the city. It was making money and I would take Bart back and I would walk past the other change of Hobbit and I would just stop right in and see what they had. Picked up a lot of books. The only thing that probably saved my pocketbook somewhere was I had to walk up the hill with all those books in my bag so I couldn't actually 
acquire quite as many as I do now, and I do a haul these days, I need to have a wagon to bring them back to the car. Anyway, here's a really fun one. I've also posted this on Instagram because actually I'm really, really proud of my treasures, and they do sometimes make an appearance here too. This is one that um, I, I came in the door, and uh, Dave, this Dave Me, said, "Oh, Felicity, I think you'll be, I think you'll be needing this one." So he showed it to me. He showed it to me, and I said. Well, David, yes, I think I will be needing that one. And um, again, I didn't care what the price was. This is a book I was going to have, and I don't regret it a bit. It is gorgeous. Um, yes, it has an intro. It has a, an intro by Umberto Eco, which is uh, worth the price of admission alone. But oh, check out some of the pictures. There's uh, you'll recognize some of these because some of them got pirated for uh, lots of internet uh, um, internet exposure, and some of them just were inspiration for other uh, for other photographers to to do the same thing again. Uh, one of my favorites, I think, was the uh, was the Prague Library. Ooh, la la, now that's a library. So of course, um, I don't think there's a lot of glare on this. I don't think I can do anything about that. Um, this, is, uh, this is an old library in Prague, and then of course near the beginning, it does kind of go in somewhat in concentric uh, order of uh, where it is in the world. Um, there's also, of course, our our all-time favorite. Couldn't much do without it. Oh, you might never even notice. There's actually. <laughs> The Warburg Library is in here. I won't show you that. I'll save that. You can just be teased with that one. I'm going to look for one of our one of our favorites, which is. Uh, let's see if I can find it here without spilling the beans to you first. <laughs> uh, Amsterdam. Oh, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting somewhere now. Oh yeah, here goes the into this one. Because that was tasty. Mm -hmm. well, let's see. Where are we? Yes. I think we're there now. Um, yeah, well, there's, there's, I've actually been to this library, so I can I can attest to just how amazing and phenomenal a place it is. And that I space enough in time, I'd have gone back every day for a year. But this is, of course, the long haul at the Trinity College in Dublin, and it is and it's a back room here where the Book of Kells is kept. And um, uh, everybody crowds up and they're all paying their monies to go in and see the Book of Kells and the rest of the library is practically deserted. They're lost. Anyway, Dita Hoffer Library's ultimate bibliophile, bibliophile pinup book. So that, was a, that was a present of myself myself. Um, this is one which I I've read, I read several times in a pretty tatty looking paperback and I had never seen it with the Artsy Bischoff, um, Artsy Bischoff? Yeah, Artsy Bischoff illustrations. And there is a fantasy guy for you, but this is the Circus of Dr. Lau. And if you haven't read it by Charles Finney, didn't do very many things. I think I've read a couple things by him. This was it. This is a wonderful uh, tongue in cheek. Um, fairly pointed story that uh, pretty much it's like a little moralizing story that says uh, here are some things you could be like here are some things that you could be like that you don't want to be like but oh, look at these people that are and b b bringing not very favorable um, comparisons between the beasts the honest beasts in the circus and the beasts and the people that went to see it let's see if I can find one of the illustrations because they're actually really really beautiful okay here's Here's one of them, just lovely, kind of fantastical, but then it's a circus, and it's a fantasy circus too. Uh, if you've never seen anything by Artsy Bashev, well that might be another, <laughs> that might be another, um, that might be another um, uh, little show and tell, because I've got a, I've got a book of some of his <laughs> other illustrations, some are a bit, a bit risque, but they're all really beautiful and amazingly done. Anyway, this is my copy, my nice copy of Charles Finney's The Circus of Dr. Lau with Artsy Bashev illustrations. Yeah, that's treasure. All right, so that is that one. And then, uh, yeah, every time this one shows up in some small corner of my library, uh, Mark Richardson says, ah, now there's the treasure in your library. I was at, uh, I was on a very nice vacation with my, my very, very good uh, uh, 
uh, brother David, my, my little, little brother David, who's not very little anymore, and uh, we all get along very well. I get along very well because um, he's a musician, and his wife's a musician, and I'm a musician, and uh, we always have a really good time, and I, I immediately relax the instant I get to their abode. Um, but we decided we were going to take a little weekend in New York and visit live, um, bookstores, libraries, whatever, bookstores. So um, we went to the Strand. Of course we went to the Strand. We were in New York. I mean, come on. So and we made our ob obligatory uh, marches through the various lower levels and we got this and that and I left various little deposits of books around because they get so heavy you can't carry them anymore and they don't give you a shopping cart. <laughs> so they probably should. So um, so doing that and then and I finally made my way up to the uh, to the rare the rare uh, book room, a book area room. It's a, a hall um, on the top floor. Those of you who've been to the Strand know that one very well. Anyway, so I'm wandering around, I saw this and I saw that, and I'm going over to one of their little display cabinets, and I said, whoa, I know those. My parents had them pieced out on their wall for years and years and years. Um, we had them in Beirut, and we had them framed in cheap old frames. We had them on, on the walls of uh, the upstairs uh, in that system to the Art Street, where we lived in Berkeley. and. Uh, Holy cow, this looks like the whole book. So I call my, I text my brother who's uh, wandering around somewhere else. He had his fun and he was he was wandering somewhere else. So I said, uh, would you would you ever mind coming back up? I've got this book. I want you to make sure that it's all there. So he and uh, he and my sister-in-law came came uh, back up and I said, so David, I've got this in the book here and it's broken out I mean it there's no there's no there's no binding left it's it's completely broken out of this the, the binding and it looks like everything's there but I don't really want to buy it unless they're all there because you know how people will break up a book to get the pictures and you know that story so they said yeah so we made a spectacle of ourselves we we made must have made the morning for several people in there we stood there like like with the gimlet gaze on the book and the index and uh, she'd read out the title and David and my brother and I would go like yes it's there it's there well it's out of order no it's there <laughs> okay I'll 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 leave you out of suspense here's the book <laughs> here's the book the holy land with David Roberts and there it is, and it's complete. It was completely unbound. I had my wonderful bookbinder in Berkeley uh, bind it uh, a few years ago and did a wonderful job, and I'm sorry, they're all beautiful. I'm actually gonna hold it up because it's really heavy and I don't wanna do anything rude to it, but this is a sample of it. And there's hundreds, I think there's something like two, two or three hundred um, etchings like this, uh, uh, illustrations um, from the etchings in this book, the etchings are actually made from were made from um, the original paintings, which are very, very expensive. Those are very desirable. This is pretty desirable all by itself, anyway. So I got this at the Strand, and the pages were complete, and I assembled them all in the correct order. After all, I had the indices, and I had it bound, and um, I. I can't remember the last time 